The Netflix drama is based on Vikram Chandra's 2006 novel Sacred Games, a sprawling 1,000-page epic which covers everything from politics, class, religion and more. Sacred Games follows down on side Luck Mumbai police officer Sartaj Singh played by Saif Ali Khan, who is warned in an ominous phone call that he has 25 days to save Mumbai. It emerges that the man at the other end of the line is notorious gangster Ganesh Gate and Nawazuddin Siddiqui, who has surfaced after years underground to issue his chilling warning. Thus unfolds a tale as Sartage rushes to save the city from an unknown threat that will kill millions as we learn about Gaten's rise to power. The eight-part drama only dropped last week but is already being hailed as a compelling watch by audiences and for good reason. Will there be another series of Sacred Games directors Anurag Kashyap and Vikram Aditya Motwani have more than delivered with Sacred Games that doesn't shy away from violence and nudity in the telling of this dark tale? They've juxtaposed the grit and the glamour of Mumbai to create a new genre that is quickly being termed Bollywood noir. Unsurprisingly Sacred Games is already garnering comparisons to fellow Netflix mafia drama Narcos. You get the sense that the likes of Oscar-winning Slumdog Millionaire and more recently Lion have served as precursors to Sacred Games with an equally uncompromising portrayal, which at times is an uncomfortable and tough watch. Sacred Games gives audiences a 360-degree view of the city, portraying both the poverty and the wealth and highlighting the differences between the two. In doing so, we get a truthful and honest depiction of a country that is rich in history and culture. This is more than a police procedural or gangster thriller, it feels all-encompassing with elements of The Wire in its approach to storytelling. Sacred Games ending explain Netflix Sacred Games is Netflix's first Indian original series Netflix Sacred Games is Netflix's first Indian original series While the story takes place in the present, there are flashbacks to Gaten's meteoric rise from his humble beginnings as the son of a priest in a rural village. In voiceover, the mobster gives context to his story by mentioning the key moments in India's recent history including the both his political and the Mandal Commission, which grounds sacred games in reality. Despite this, the show is teetering on the brink of magical realism and you do start to wonder if there is a supernatural or otherworldly force at play here. Gangster Gaton seems certain of his own immortality, so much so you wonder if he could well be a mythical deity reborn. The uncertainty simply adds to this compelling drama. Sacred Games has a cast to match the script with joint leads Khan and Siddiqui proving to be utterly watchable with their characters are inexplicably linked. Siddiqui is superb as Gaetond, who is one of the best TV villains for a while and is an anti-hero that you're rooting for even though H.E.S. a cold-blooded killer. In an interesting coincidence, the young Gaetond is played by rising star and child actor Sunny Power of Lion fame, which also featured Siddiqui. On the flip side, we also find ourselves cheering Sartage on as H.E.S. constantly on the back foot as he tries to fight for justice in an inherently corrupt police force. Who is Sacred Games actress Kubris 8 who plays Cuckoo Netflix Sacred Games is Netflix's first Indian original series but the women also hold their own in Sacred Games with up-and-coming actress Radhika Apte as raw agent and analyst Anjali Matha. Her hard-as-nails agent is given. A more prominent role in the drama compared to the novel and ISNT afraid to give as good as she gets in her testosterone-fueled line of work. Then there's model and breakout star Kubris 8, who plays transgender singer and dancer Cuckoo, who entrances Gaetond and the audience. She is mesmerizing and the love story between Cuckoo and Gaetond is poignant and heartbreaking. It's safe to say that Netflix has a success on its hands with Sacred Games, which looks likely to have severals. The first run only covers one quarter of Chandra's source material. Following the release and quick success of Sacred Games, Netflix has also commissioned Indian horror series Ghoul showing that international audiences want new stories and new settings. The show's success proves that language is no longer a barrier to telling stories. While we're not completely there yet with international TV, we're becoming a hell of a lot more open which can only be a good thing. Sacred Games is available to watch on Netflix now.